In this video, I'll be discussing how we process data from electron diffraction ring patterns that we obtain on a TEM. So just a heads up, I'll be using the thermoscientific software VLOX. And if you don't have access to VLOX, you can measure patterns in a free software like ImageJ, and then still use the techniques that I am explaining at the end of the video. So let's get started. Here is our ring pattern that we'll be using. And the way that I like to do this is I like to use the circle annotation in VLOX and then measure what the radius of the circle is because this is more accurate than doing measurements from the central spot out to these other spots. So we want to try to center ourselves and zooming in using the scroll. And then if we hold control and shift and left click on our mouse, we'll create a perfect circle from the center. You just want to make sure that the uh, circle is centered. Sometimes your image might not be centered itself, so just use the arrow keys to try to adjust the centering. Now we're going to repeat this process for however many rings you would like. I'll just do three for now, but you can see I could measure more rings if I liked. And now we're going to get the despacings by right-clicking and say display radii. And this will give us the radii in picometers, which is a bit of a strange unit, but we can work with that. You may want to save your image with the measurements as like a TIFF or some other image file. So you can do that by right clicking and say export. But we're gonna now compare our measurements to literature values. So I have this spreadsheet that I use for that. It auto calculates um, the D spacings in angstrom, since that's what's reported in literature. And then I'm going to use literature values for different mineral phases and see what the percent differences are between what I measured and what the theory says. So to find the different mineral possibilities, I like to use the American Mineralogist Crystal Structure Database. There are other databases. I'll link those in the description. We could search in several different ways in this database. There's this handy chemistry search, which if you just have EDS, and so you just know what elements are present, you can select and then exclude certain elements. And then this database will show you possible matches. We can also use our actual diffraction data that we just obtained. And in this case, we want to use the despacing option. We'll type in the despacing for those three rings. Um, and you type in the value and then you add a tolerance. So plus or minus what? Uh, so here I say 0.2. Maybe that's a bit too high. Maybe you want it to be more constrained. You can continue doing that for however many despacings you would like. You can also combine these. You can do a chemistry search with the despacings. But I'm going to keep it simple. I think I know what mineral this is, so I'll just type in the mineral name, which is magnetite. And then I ask the system to search for me, and then it gives me 85 matching records. So these are pulled from the literature, and you want to make sure you're using one that makes sense with your material. So you might not want to use really old data. You want to make sure the, the composition makes sense. I don't think mine are titanomagnetites, so that's not a good match. Pressures might be different. Temperatures might be different. In this case, this is for zero gigapascal, so that's fine. And you may care about if the material is synthetic or natural. So once you're ready, you can download the diffraction data as a text file. And this will be what that looks like. So there's a lot of data on here that you don't need at the moment. Really, all that matters is the despacing and the HKL of the plane. So I'm going to choose the best matches that I see. And for this first ring, R1, the best match is to the 111 plane in magnetite, which is 4.847. And then for the second ring, the best match is the 220 plane. So I'll type in the despacing for that into the spreadsheet. And you can see that the percent difference is auto calculating because I have it set up to do that. Then we have our last ring and the best match is to the 311 plane. So let's go ahead and type in those values just so we have them in our notes and we'll see what the percent differences are. 
So these are all really good matches. How do I know what good is? Well, it depends. Personally, my rule is that if something is f from three to five percent difference, that's an okay match. From one to three or less than one even is, is a good match. Anything above five percent difference, I start to question whether that's actually my mineral phase. So in this case, this is a good match to magnetite. So we've determined what our mineral phase is.